gonna continue what I preached before I went for the holiday. It's from Matthew chapter 14. Let's open our Bibles, Matthew chapter 14. Before I went for the, the vacation, I preached about um, how many of you still remember when, when Peter walked on water? Remember that one? Okay. And you know the story before Peter uh, and Jesus walked on water. Uh, Jesus fed 5,000 people, and before Jesus fed 5,000 people, he got the news that John the Baptist got killed, beheaded. So it was a sad news for, for Jesus and for the disciples. And after um, Peter and Jesus walked on water, and then he went to the other side of the lake. And this is what happened in the other side of the lake. Uh, there's an insane man get demon possessed, and Jesus set him free, and this is the next one. Okay, Matthew chapter 14, verse 34 to 36. Let's open this one. <clears throat> After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Genesaret. When the people recognized Jesus, the news of his arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area. And soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe and all who touched him were healed. Okay. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe and all, all who touched him were healed. Okay. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for your presence that you are here. I thank you that you are faithful. I thank you that you are alive. I thank you that you know everything that we have. I thank you you are a good, good father. And I pray for this moment that you speak to us. Set us free. Refresh our spirit and our soul. And heal us, Lord. Because in your presence there is freedom. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. I just want to commit this time into your hands. Speak through me and to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So in this scripture it says they beg him, the people beg Jesus to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe. And all who touch him were healed. Our God is an approachable, reachable, and touchable God. Amen. I repeat again. Our God is an approachable reachable, and touchable God. Don't think that God is far, far, far away there. <laughs> He's there with you. He's approachable, reachable, and touchable God. All who touched Jesus were healed. So there is no condition, favoritism, or VIP groups in touching God. Because it says all, all, it doesn't matter which ethnic you're coming from, all who touch him were healed. Okay? All who touch him were healed. So the sermon that, um, the title sermon for today is When We Approach God. That's I'm going to put it this way. Okay? When We Approach God. So all who touch God were healed. Maybe some of you are not familiar or comfortable with touching or being touched. It's okay. Because everybody has different love languages. And we should respect one another. It's okay. But I want to ask you, have you ever thought or felt that we all need the touch of God? We need to come closer to God. We need to reach Him. We need, we need to touch His divine glory. The scriptures say all who touch Jesus were healed. And we want to experience that. Amen. All who touch Him were healed. There are some people who are interested with God and in spiritual matters. But there are also some people who are not interested in God and any spiritual matters. 
people come to God can come to God with many um, different reason or expectation. Mainly it is their personal needs. When someone comes to God, most of them they have their personal needs. Maybe financial needs, maybe a career needs, healing needs, primary life needs. In this context, people come to Jesus because of their healing needs. But I'm not going to preach about healing today. Okay, I'm not going to preach about healing. But I'm going to preach about what happens when someone approaches God. That's what I'm going to preach. What happens when someone approaches God? I'm going to give you uh, four points for today. What happens when you approach God? Number one, you will find Him. Okay? You will find Him. Have you ever felt that God is not there when you are calling Him? I have. Have you ever felt that God is silent and you don't feel Him when you pray? I have. <laughs> You've been praying very long for this one thing and then it seems like God is silent. When you don't feel Him, it doesn't mean that He doesn't exist. We believe that God exists not by our feeling, not by uh, when we feel goosebumps, <laughs> but we believe that God exists because faith. We don't see God, but we believe that God exists by faith. Okay, not by feelings that we have. Oh, I feel God. And then I don't feel God. It's not by feelings, but by faith. Because God is everywhere. Let's open Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him, like again, when we approach God, that's the sermon title. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists. Okay? And that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. So you will find God when you look for Him. For our God is omnipresence God. God is everywhere. He's not limited by space and time. God is here now. God is in your room. God is, God was yesterday. God was here now. And God will be always there tomorrow and so on. It doesn't limit it by, it's not limited by space and time. God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, If you look for me wholeheartedly, the Bible says what? You will find. Me. Now, the question is this. And the answer is there. Why we feel that we don't find Him when we pray? Because we don't look for Him wholeheartedly. Okay? The key is there. The answer is there. If if you look for God wholeheartedly, you will find Jesus. You will find God. So when someone approaches God, first he, means he must believe that God exists. And you will find Him. You will find God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29, it says this. But from there you will search again for the Lord your God. And if you search for Him with all your heart and soul, you will find Him. It says again in Deuteronomy, if you search for Him, if you look for God with all your heart and all your soul, you will find Him. Now the question is this, is God is the needs that you are looking for? That's the question. Back again to the, the, the first scripture that I gave you. 
someone approach God because their personal need. They all bring uh, their sick to Jesus and they beg him to touch him. And those, everyone who touched him were healed. So whatever you have, the needs that you have, we should bring to God. And one thing that I believe God knows what you're going through. God knows that there was strike back then. God knows. But you know what? We choose to give thanks to God no matter what, what happened, even though in our vacation. God knows that it's going to be 42 degrees. God knows it's going to be 39 degrees. God knows. But I always say loud, thank you. So whatever the needs that you have, maybe you have a prayer needs, healing needs, and Joanne just also uh, mentioned to you that there's a very good news that Pastor Peter has a, a very good progress. That's what I believe. That's the goodness of God will never fail. Amen? God is faithful. So number one, when someone approach God, they will find Him. And number two, what happens when you approach God? Number two, God will come closer to you. God will come closer to you. Okay, let's open James chapter 4, verse 8a. It says this, verse 8a, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Okay, wash your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Come close to God, and, and God will come close to you. So when you seek God, you will not only find Him, but you also want to have an intimate relationship with Him. You're not only finding Him, but you also want to touch Him. Now, we know that God is near, but there are times that we don't feel that God is near. The truth is, He did not move away. We did. So don't think that, God, you are running away from me. No, he did not. We are the one running away from God. That's why the scriptures say, come close to God and God will come close to you. Because we are the one who run away from God. Not God. Same as the prodigal son story. The son was the one who ran away from the father. And yet the father was waiting for his son to come back to him. Let me give you, a, let's open up this story. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 24. This is the story when the son coming back to, to his, his father. To illustrate this point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And then he wasted all his money in wild living. So the, the, the son walked out from the father. And about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him. And the man sent him into his field to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pots he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the highest servant have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me as a higher servant. So he returned home. That's the good news. So he returned home to his father, and while he was Still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to his servant, Quick, bring the finest robe in this house, and put it on him, get a ring to, for his finger and sandal for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead, and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Okay? So that's, that's number two. When we are come close to God, God will come close to you. 
is all back to us. God is everywhere, but we are the one who run away from the Lord. So we need to come back to God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Psalm 145, verse 18. Psalm 145, verse 18. The Lord is close to all who call on Him. Yes, to all who call on Him in truth. The Lord is close to all who call on Him. Yes, to all call Him in truth. Okay. Number three. Now, this is something different than number one and number two. When we approach God, what happened? Number three. The devil will try to block you. Yeah, it's different than number one and number two. What happens when we approach God? The devil will try to block. Okay? Now, this is very important to understand and to remind ourselves that so many times that we are trying to approach God, somehow things happen on the journey, on that process. The devil will try to block you in approaching God by giving you many obstacles, distraction through your surroundings. That's what is happening. Because what? Because the devil knows once we connect with God, he cannot touch us. So he tried to uh, distract you from coming to God. Same thing what Matthew 6, chapter 6 says. This is what Jesus said. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. It says, when you pray, go away by yourself and shut the door behind you and pray to God in private. It means don't let you get distracted by bus running when you're approaching God. Because Satan knows how to uh, give us distraction in approaching God. Now, it says, when you pray, go away by yourself and shut the door behind you and pray to God in private. And pray to God in private. Do you know why? Because you can go away by yourself, you can shut the door behind you, and you can still not pray after that. I repeat again. I repeat again. Some of you like uh, missed that one. The Bible say, when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray. It says again at the end, and pray after you shut the door, you pray. Why? Why it says that? After you shut the door, why it says pray to God in private? Because you can go away by yourself, you can shut the door behind you, and you can, you can still not pray after that. You do something else in your room when you shut the door. Are you with me? I experienced that one before. What? I already set a time, I already closed the door, but somehow my mind still gets distracted and I, I end up didn't pray. <laughs> so when, when you go to your room, shut the door behind you, and then the Bible says, pray to God. Because you can still not pray in that room. Why? Because distraction is always there. Either in your mind, either someone like to try to reach you, either the devil try to talk to your mind, everything is always in the mind. Like the battle, the battle, your mind is the battlefield. Okay, so that's number three. When we approach God, the devil will try to block you. Okay, so be careful with, with that one also. You need to be alert when we approach God. And number four, when we approach God, what happens when we approach God? Number four, you will bear fruit. Okay, you will bear fruit. That's in John 15, verse 4 to 5. John 15, verse 4 to 5. It says this, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severe from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, what is the context of the fruit here? Some people get misunderstood, misinterpreted of this. When they say the fruit, they are talking about money, wealth. It's not. 
nothing to do with the money wealth here. So the fruit is not about money or wealth, but the fruit of the vine itself. So the fruit of Jesus Christ, the fruit of Christ likeness. So Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. So whatever the fruit we will produce, it is the fruit of the vine where we attach into. So are you with me? When we attach to Jesus, then the fruit will be Jesus Christ likeness coming out from us. So, when we attach to Jesus, when we approach God, we will bear fruits. People will see the fruits of your godly living comes out of you. Okay, so that's number four. You will bear fruits. You will bear fruits. Okay. Now, as a closing, I want to close with this one question, and I'm going to give you another three points. So, how to experience God divine touch when you approach Him? How to experience God's divine touch when you approach Him. Back again to the story, the first beginning of our scripture here. Matthew chapter 14, verse 34 to 36. Okay, let's see this one again as a closing. Can I invite Benson, please? Thank you, Ben. Okay, it says this. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret. When the people recognized Jesus, the news of his arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. Okay, now, can you show me verse 35? There are three things that you can bring home. And you can apply in your life. So how to experience God's divine touch? Pastor, I know this is what happens when you approach God. When we approach God, we will find God. God will come close to you and the devil will try to distract you and you will bear fruit. Yes, we know that one, Pastor. But now, how to approach God? Okay, let's start with this number, uh, verse 35. There's going to be another three points. When the people, what's the first one? Recognize. That's number one. When the people recognize how to experience God's divine touch in your life, number one, recognize. You recognize Him. You recognize Jesus. I know Jesus is here. I know Jesus is real. I know Jesus can heal me. Recognize Him. Number one, recognize. Recognize that God exists. Recognize that God, hear my, uh, hear my prayers. Recognize. Okay, number one, recognize. When the people recognize Jesus, and all start from that, recognize. They hear, they, they, they know that Jesus is around. Recognize Jesus. That's number one. And number two, keep going in verse 35. Recognize Jesus. The news of your arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all, bringing all the sick to be healed. Bringing all. This is number two. When you recognize Jesus, the next one, you surrender all. Okay. You surrender all. Not only recognize, yeah, I know God is good. I know God can heal me. I know get God can open up the way. But sometimes I feel God is not here. But I know God is faithful. I've been hearing this sermon so much. Okay, but the next one, surrender all. Surrender all. Same thing with that scripture. They bring all the six to be here. Surrender all. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says this. Give all your worries and cares. To God, for He cares for you. They give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares for you. Matthew chapter eleven, verse twenty-eight to thirty. It says, "Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burden. No wonder we are weary, because we are carried." Heavy burden. <laughs> and I will give you rest. 
Verse 29, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Okay, surrender. Surrender all. And number three, that's in verse 36. Can you open again? Matthew 15, verse 36. Okay. Yeah, Matthew 14, verse 36. Okay. So after they bringing all the six to Jesus, the next one they back him. They back him, back Jesus to let the six touch, at least the fringe of his robe. So they back him. So this is number three request. First one you recognize, you know, in your mind, in your heart, I have God that can heal me. I have God that is faithful. And then number two, you surrender all to God. And number three, you request. You ask God. You ask God. Asking God, there's nothing wrong in asking God. That's why in the beginning I say this. Remember what I say? Our God is an approachable God, reachable God, and touchable God. Matthew 7 verse 7 says, Keep on asking. And you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Okay? So church, I just want to close with this, that God will never be out of touch. God will never be out of reach. Because our God is an approachable, reachable, and touchable God. No, I can, I can preach this, and you already hear this many times about this message. It's all, but it all goes back again to your heart. I mean, to your own decision that, Lord, life is good. Maybe life is tough. But good or bad, bad day or good day, <laughs> you still need to seek God. Amen? Because there's two different types of people. They seek God when they have a good day, or when they have a bad day, they seek God. But good day or bad day, it doesn't matter. God is always good God. We need to seek Him. Once again, all who touch Him were healed. All of us who touch God were healed. Amen. Let's pray. Let us stand together. As and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock at the door will be open, knock and the door will be open wide, as and you will receive. Seek and you will find Knock and the door will be open Knock and the door will be open Why? As and you will receive Seek and you will find Knock and the door will be open. Knock and the door will be open wide. As and you will receive. Let's ask the Lord. Seek and you will find. Let's seek Him. Knock and the door will be open. Knock and the door will be open wide. Yes, God. We thank you that we have you, God who listens, God who sees, and God who knows. Even before we mention it to you, you already know what we have, what we are going through in our mind. God, we thank you for good days that we have. And we also thank you that we have days that are very tough on us right now. 
because it's not only about good day or bad days but it's about that we are going through every day with you we lack nothing until today and i thank you whatever is happening right now god you are faithful for your people and i pray that you touch every heart is not only satisfied with the life that we have day to day always goes by with gladness with goodness but bring us closer to you because life is more than wealth life is more than money life is more than only good days but life is about you god and i pray that there's a passion there's a hunger seeking you more approaching you come closer to you because those everyone who touch you they will heal they will get healed they will be blessed they will find jesus because jesus is everything that we need because without you can we can do nothing lord and i pray that this message today is to remind us i believe that most of us already know about this message but let it be a reminder for us that we need god we need god don't ever don't ever we run away from him don't ever the that we put god on the third place fourth place in our life not even second place but let's seek god wholeheartedly and you will find the greatest blessing that you will ever have that is jesus himself the source of your life So God as we coming to you we recognize that God is faithful and we surrender all to you. So church whatever the situation you have you may, maybe some of you have requests maybe some of you have struggles in life maybe some of you have things that God needs to open up the way just bring them to God. Maybe you think that God is silent maybe you think that God is late but he will never be too late to help you out. So God, we want to touch you. We want to bring everything to you. Because those who ask, they will receive. Those who seek, they will find. And those who knock the door, the door will be open wide to you. I thank you, Lord. We receive this message. For our family, for us, and for our life, God is faithful. Thank you, Lord. 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 As and you will receive seek and you will find knock and the door will be open knock and the door will be open why as and you will receive touch Lord. seek and you will find Knock and the door will be open. Knock and the door will be open wide. Let's lift both our hands. Father, as we're going to dismiss from this place, I pray for your people that they will come to you closer, all of us will come to you closer, and God will come close to us. That the peace of the Lord, His strength and His faithfulness, His mercy and His goodness shall follow us all the days of our life. Bless God, bless your people. And I pray those who are not feeling well, who cannot come today and watching online right now, I pray and speak blessing and healing upon them. Because nothing is impossible with God and let your hand Touch and reach them, Lord. Pray for healing in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God. Just want to commit.
your people's life today and tomorrow that the goodness of the Lord surely will abandon in our life. We receive this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. God bless you all. Let's God give praise again. Thank you. Talk to us again next week. Have a good weekend. God bless you, church.